Today's video is likely going to be a controversial one, and that's because we're going to be talking about Notion alternatives. And as many of you know, there are lots of different Notion alternatives on the market, but it's very difficult to judge which one's right for you. So we're going to help you find the right Notion alternative if you're looking for it for personal use, and we'll dig into why I'd recommend going for those different apps in this video. Welcome everyone, my name is Francesco D'Alessio, and welcome to Tool Finder. If you're new here, do subscribe. And if you're looking for a note-taking application, you might as well get our buyer's guide to note-taking apps. It'll help you with insight and knowledge about how to pick the best note-taking app. And you'll find that linked below in the description. But without further ado, let's dive into this video. So this is a really difficult video to make because Notion is such a well-built application. It's an app that has so much going for it in terms of its ability. So it's actually very hard to find something like for like as an alternative. Alternative. And that's because Notion has built databases, it's built a fully flexible document management system which allows you to build whatever you want. And it's also got an amazing community behind it, which also makes it difficult because there's so much resources already there to learn it. So we're going to be taking that in mind as we look at these alternatives. And for our first alternative, this is AnyType. Now I've been talking about AnyType for some time now. It's a note-taking application that uses something called object-based note-taking. And that concept sounds pretty crazy, but you know when you use your Notion account, everything gets created as a page. And of course, in that page there are blocks. The same concept goes with any type. When you create a page there are blocks but a page isn't just a page. It's a template, an object if you like, that allows you to build from that each time. And each of these templates or objects are built completely differently. So for example you could link it to a person or a meeting or a simple note all the way to managing a task and a project. But the idea behind this is the object is a way to structure the note Note that you take. Now, that's not only the reason a lot of people like any type. It has some powerful features in terms of getting things started with your note taking. For example, a graph view, a flow view, and also other views that are going to help you to manage your notes more effectively, including ones like sets, which help you to organize all of your ideas and thoughts and notes into these different structures, much like you would in Notion databases. The other kicker to this application is that it's local first. It's it's offline and it also uses end-to-end -end security when uploading your notes to the cloud, which means that you have that protection that you don't get inside of apps like Notion. So at the same time, it's really focused on the security and privacy aspect. And that seems to be baked into their whole company ethos, which is slightly different to Notion, which is much more widely available and doesn't have those abilities that I know of at least. Next on our list is one called Capacities. Now, if you like Notion, then you're probably going to like Capacities because it looks very similar. The applications are very beautiful and easy to use, but Capacities is probably very strictly for note-taking. And much like any type, it has something called object-based note-taking, which allows you to create objects as you get started. Now, obviously, we talked about the benefits of that. It can save a bunch of time in the future when building out your account and linking things up and using things like PKM, personal knowledge management, and network thought can be incredibly valuable using apps like Capacities and any type. But there are a few abilities inside this app that are pretty neat. And and I want to focus on two of them. The first of those is a calendar view, which allows you to do daily notes. Now this is great for planning tasks ahead, but it also is great for using as your journal. And the interface is really nice for this, allowing you to see what you created on that day and skip ahead to what is planned in the future. But what I also like is their feature called AI chat. And some of this is locked under the premium, but you can plug in your open AI key and have conversations about your notes, adding the object as the premise and allowing you to expand on the those different objects or notes that you've created in your account, which I quite like. You can save your AI chats as part of your experience, and I find that to be a little bit better structure than what Notion has in its artificial intelligence at the moment. So next up is one called Craft. Now this is great for your team, but it also can be good as an individual. Craft is a really beautiful documents-based app, and it doesn't have those powerful database abilities, but it is looking into the object-based note-taking, which I mentioned at the start of this video. But Craft, as a whole, will help you to create documents, It'll allow you to share them and create basic structures. But more recently, they've been adding abilities like whiteboards that are going to help you to visualize your ideas much more effectively. And I think some of 
the abilities and craft when it comes to creating a beautiful document are much better than you get in Notion. And I wanna pay particular attention to something called cards inside a craft, which you can create and build inside of any page that you make. And these beautiful cards are basically like tiles inside of your account. And they can be customized and modified in the premium version and allow you to do much more. The negative craft is unlike Notion, you don't get free access with unlimited blocks. You only get 10 documents to start out with and then two every single week that you use it, which can be incredibly limiting over time. So it's well worth looking to the premium pricing if you're looking at craft as an option. Those whiteboards and those page-like builder abilities are definitely the killer features in Craft, but it won't replace the databases that you typically get inside of Notion. Now, next up is one called Affine Pro. Now, I've reviewed it here on the channel, and what I quite liked about it is that you can create a note or a document, and you can turn that instantly into a whiteboard experience. And it's probably the best way I've seen this being done on the market, because it naturally brings those two interconnected. And then if, for example, you were to update the whiteboard or the document, they interlink together, which is very cool. Maybe I'll play that scene from Ryan Reynolds saying interlink, but it's really beautiful in terms of how it works and operates. And I think that Notion could learn a lot from this application, mainly because what it does very well is it turns those documents into whiteboards without having to change any of the structures in the account. Now, this application is in its early days and it does have a lot of artificial intelligence features. I think it's slightly overpriced, but at the same time, it's got some promising ideas and does have a real focus on local first and security, which any type has been really getting a lot of traction from. So it's worth considering if you're looking for more whiteboard based alternatives to Notion. So number five and what's on our list is Obsidian and you can probably notice the trend around all of these apps. They're all very much note taking focus but of course we'll probably try and do another video where we dive into the work based ones because that's a little bit more difficult to make but largely Obsidian is probably the final alternative that I mentioned and it's probably a look away from Notion as a whole. The application does a fantastic job by building out your notes in a PKM style. So you can create network thought and link all these notes together, which makes it a beautiful application for turning these notes into ideas, research, and there's a powerful feature more recently added called Obsidian Canvas, which allows you to connect up these notes in a whiteboard-like structure. And the best thing about Obsidian is it's free to use. It's local first, and there is an option to sync it as well. Many people do it with iCloud data. I can't remember the name of it, iCloud Drive, but there is a optional $4 per month service called Sync, which allows you to do it with E2E -E notes as well, which is very helpful. But largely, Obsidian is a really interesting bear. And one of the things that I found recently is you can actually turn on and off the cool plugins as part of that, which is very cool. If you're looking to learn Obsidian, I'd recommend checking out Effective Obsidian, which is a course that Justin DeRose works on. And naturally, you can find it in the link in the description if you're interested. So those are the five alternatives I would look at when looking looking at Notion alternatives. If you're looking for more options, you can jump over to toolfinder.co and explore all of the note-taking apps and much more, and use the filters to narrow down your options if you're interested, in case we didn't mention one of them in this video. So thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you found this incredibly useful. Imagine finding a Notion alternative that's right for you. I really do hope this video did help with that. So thank you so much. I will talk to you all very soon, folks. Do subscribe if you're brand new and do like this video if you found it valuable and I'll see you in a future video. And if you found a Notion alternative, come back to this video and leave a comment because it always helps people to find out the best apps on the market. So thank you very much and I'll talk to you all very soon. Cheerio.